This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum bringing you episode 22 of season 3 of the Westford Wardsman podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be reading the Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, May 28, 1910, and I'll elaborate on what was happening in Westford that week. The week starts with the Westford Center section. The following is quoted from a recent issue of the Boston Evening Transcript. Quote, Died at Brookline, May 20th, Mary Augusta, wife of the late George Scammon, Esquire, and daughter of the late Otis and Elizabeth Bartlett Minot. End quote. Mr. Scammon died at Hotel Beaconsfield, and the funeral was held at the family residence on Marlboro Street. The deceased is pleasantly remembered in town, having made sojourns here with her daughters during the summer. Her life was surrounded with all that love and material comfort could suggest, but the great misfortune of blindness had doubled, uh, had clouded the last years of her life. Her kinswoman, uh, who was a first cousin, Mrs. Alma Minot Richardson of this village, attended the funeral. J. Horace Burnham of Essex spent the weekend with his daughter, Miss Winifred Burnham, teacher at the Frost School. Mr. Burnham has been actively identified with the shipbuilding industry in, at, at Essex for many years. There was a Burnham family in Westford uh, on the Littleton Road. I don't know whether they're related to this Horace Burnham of Essex or not. Mr. and Mrs. Elmer D. Cole of Washington, D.C., and Mr. Cole's two little daughters were in town Sunday and attended the Congregational Church, where Mrs. Cole was formerly a member. They were going to the family home in Maine for the summer. Mrs. Cole was formerly Miss Edith A. Cipher, and her marriage to Mr. Cole took place at this church last summer. Mrs. M. E. Mitchell and Miss Sarah A. Pear of Cambridge have been recent guests of Mrs. H. M. Seavies. Also, Miss Laura Weber, sister of our former school superintendent, has been a visitor at this home. Mr. and Mrs. Harry Brennan left town on Monday, returning to their native town in Cape Breton. Mr. Brennan has been for several years in the employ of Oscar R. Spaulding and occupied one of his houses. Uh, Oscar Spaulding was a local lumberman and was also a selectman uh, about the, about this time. He lived at one Leland Road and owned several other houses and woodlots in town. He spelled his name S-P-A-A-L-D-I-N-G without a U, as most Spaulding spell it. Miss Emily F. Fletcher and Miss Mary E. Drew attended Miss Edith D. Babbitt's wedding to Isaac Staples Hall at Fitchburg on Tuesday, May 2nd of this week. Miss Babbitt was, until the first of the year, one of the teachers at the academy. Warren E. Karkin has kept right in step with the march of improvements by erecting in his yard at 58 Main Street a fine new flagpole measuring 51 feet, all ready for Memorial Day. A merry barge party of 25 Grangers drove over to Acton in charge of Will E. Wright on Tuesday evening. They were cordially received and enjoyed witnessing the ladies' degree staff of that Grange, which was pronounced by all the best yet. A salad supper was served. The next paragraph, or two paragraphs, is called Social. The Loyalty Club of the Congregational Church, composed of a group of young misses under the direction of Mrs. Lillian G. Lumbert, gave a social on Thursday evening of last week. The attendance was good, and the entertainment consisted of reading, music, and pantomime. Pantomime. Miss Arvilla Pickett of North Chelmsford, recently graduated from the Boston School of Expression, was the reader and gave much pleasure with the unaffected and graceful rendering of her selections. The pantomime was in three scenes and was called In Search of a Wife. Arthur Hildreth impersonated the bachelor and Edith Mills, Ida Trask, Ethel Richards and Hilda Isles, Ardrith Carter, Effa Bicknell and Anna Sims were the young ladies in the scene. At the close of the entertainment, refreshments of cake and fruit lemonade were served. 
a good sum for the church treasury was realized. The next section is called Memorial Day. Not since the Academy Centennial Celebration in 1892 has Westford had such a memorable day as its annals, in its annals as is planned for next Monday when the new Soldiers Monument presented to the town by Colonel Edwin D. Metcalf of Auburn, New York in memory of his father is to be dedicated. This, in addition to the usual impressive events of Memorial Day, will make the day one long to be remembered, and the townspeople are busy individually and collectively with preparations. It will be an old home day, beginning probably with Saturday, when very many households will receive guests. Sunday, the Union Memorial Service will be with the Union Congregational Church at 10.30 in the morning. Reverend David Wallace will preach the sermon, and the other pastors in town will participate in the services, and the United Choirs will sustain the musical part of the service. The members of the Westford Veteran Association will be the guests of honor. In the afternoon, they will decorate the graves of their comrades. Monday, the unveiling of the monument will take place at 11.30, followed by the dinner at 1.30 p.m. to be served in a tent erected on the common. The after-dinner exercises held in the tent will include an address by the Honorable John D. Long and singing by the Weber Quartet of Boston. Music will be furnished during the day by the Nashua Military Band. The public buildings and many private residences are to be decorated and with good trolley car service and the hope of good weather it should prove a memorable day for our beautiful hilltop village we'll certainly read more about this next week the next section is the about town section additional improvements on the old levi t fletcher farm at 120 lowell road brookside are being developed and carried out both to the improvement of the old homestead the village, and the town roads. A new double-face wall is being built from the Horace Hamlet estate to the corner of Lowell and Chamberlain Road, with the final intentions of continuing on the Lowell Road to the grand old farm mansion. The village of Brookside and the town generally were fortunate when Miss Ella Wright became the owner of this old homestead. Uh, she inherited it, actually. She has a strong inherent belief in the preservation of the beautiful in nature and building it up where torn down by the uncultured hand of man. The benevolence of Mrs. Hobart, widow of Vice President Garrett A. Hobart, has enabled her aunt, Mrs. Elizabeth Harwood, to erect a monument in memory of her family. Mrs. Harwood has also put the, put the lot in good condition. I believe that's a reference to the cemetery lot. Miss Mabel Drew and Mrs. H. V. Hildreth were chosen delegates to represent the Unitarian Church at the annual meeting of the Unitarian Association, which was held in Boston this week. Mrs. Arthur Lamoureux died at her home at Brookside early Tuesday morning, aged 32 years. She leaves five small children. The funeral took place on Wednesday morning from St. Catherine's Church, Graniteville. Burial was in St. Catherine's Cemetery. There will be no services at the Unitarian Church next Sunday, as the church has been invited by personal request and by the law of custom to the union service at the Congregational Church in memory of the heroic living and the departed who helped to preserve our equity. The next uh, section is called Alliance Meeting. Lowell, Littleton, Chelmsford, and Shirley were well represented at the Alliance meeting in the vestry of the Unitarian Church last week Thursday afternoon. An address of welcome was given by Mrs. Benjamin H. Bailey, president of the Westford Alliance, and she was also the wife of the pastor of that church, Reverend Benjamin Bailey. Reverend Dr. Littlefield of Brookline gave the address of the afternoon on, quote, the growing Unitarianism. End quote, and gave many important facts to support in support of his subject. After the address, a social hour followed, at which time Mrs. George T. Day thoughtfully and generously entertained the company by selections on the Victor talking machine, also called a Victrola. 
A fine lunch was attractively set before the gathering as part of the social program by Mrs. Benjamin H. Bailey and Mrs. Sherman H. Fletcher. The reception committee were Mrs. Benjamin H. Bailey, Mrs. Harrison Belding Hall, Mrs. Sherman H. Fletcher, Mrs. Alma Richardson, Miss Clara Smith, and Miss Emily F. Fletcher. White and purple lilacs with which the vestry was decorated was one of the inspirational factors with which thoughtful hands had prepared. The next section is the Forge Village section. Edmund J. Hunt and William Hunt have purchased what is known as the Stephen Hutchins Farm in Westford from George Brown. The property comprises over 100 acres of land with fruit trees, a 10-room house, barn, and other buildings, livestock, farm implements, and wagons. George Brown, who came into possession of the farm after the death of his grandfather, the late Stephen Hutchins, which occurred last March, has accepted a position with Thatcher and Ireland of Littleton and moved this week. The Hunt brothers will take possession with their families immediately. Uh, this was the old Colonel John Robinson farm at 17 Robinson Road, which at the time consisted primarily of a large colonial era house and a very large barn. The old house and barn were destroyed by fire on July 11th, 1937, unfortunately. There is a marker on Robinson Road at the site of this uh, house, which is now occupied by a small ranch. The musical recital given by Miss Sarah Precious at her home on Pleasant Street on Saturday evening proved a very enjoyable affair. A large number of relatives and friends of the pupils were present. An excellent program was given, at the conclusion of which sandwiches, cake, ice cream, and coffee was served. Owing to the rain on Saturday, the baseball game between the Lions of this village and the Crescents of Lowell was postponed. Philip D. Lord has been confined to his home the past few days by illness. Miss Annie P. Keefe of Townsend Harbor spent Saturday and Sunday at, as the guest of Mr. and Mrs. John Carmichael. The many friends of William Burnett will be sorry to hear that he is at St. Vincent's Hospital, Worcester, where he underwent an operation on Sunday for the removal of his left eye. Mr. Burnett has suffered intensely for some time and obtained no relief from the many specialists which he visited. Mr. and Mrs. Harrison Sargent and their little granddaughter, Miss Arlene Tanner of East Pepperell, were entertained Wednesday and Thursday by Mr. and Mrs. David Lord at their home on Pleasant Street. Mrs. George Kugel is suffering from a sprained shoulder as the result of a fall she received Monday at her home. Dr. Cyril A. Blaney is the attending physician. Mr. and Mrs. John Venn are moving into the house vacated by William Hunt and family. The next section is uh, about a concert. A very enjoyable concert was given on Wednesday evening under the direction of Mrs. E. Marion Sweat and Edith Forster. The artists who took part were Miss Elma Engelman, soprano, Mrs. Oliver Wellington, priest, contralto, Miss Vernie G. Lowe, reader, Walter S. Lugy, cellist, Ruhl P. Lugy, violinist, Miss Edith Marion Sweat, accompanist, Miss Edith Foster, assisting. The concert as a whole was a grand success, and the several artists well deserved the applause afforded them. The, the Wood Pigeon and the Owl by Miss Engelman were rendered in a very pleasing manner and seemed to be well suited to this gifted singer's voice. Mrs. Priest, who is a resident of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, was exceptionally well received by the audience. Many artists have the ability but lack the personality. and Mrs. Priest, one finds an abundance of both. Her rich contralto voice was particularly well adapted to the selections she rendered. Goodbye, Sweet Day, with cello obligato, and Lethe, with violin obligato, and Thy Name, uh, deserving particular mention. Miss Lowe's readings were of high, qual of high order, and her rendition of Miss Maloney on the Chinese Question afforded great pleasure to the large audience. That was undoubtedly a humorous reading. 
The Luigi brothers are very well known to our readers, and their playing was a repetition of their usual display of ability. The rendition of Evening Star from Tannhauser by W.S. Luigi was very artistic from a musical standpoint, and their support to Mrs. Priest and their obligados both showed well their ability as musicians. Miss Sweet demonstrated very marked ability as an accompanist, and throughout the entire program, the several soloists were well supported in a pleasing manner by her able work. Miss Edith Foster, as accompanist with a trio composed of piano, violin, and cello, did much to prove her ability as an accompanist, which was well demonstrated. The affair was the event of the season and was much enjoyed by the audience as evidenced by the applause generously given each number. The next section is the Graniteville section. Reverend John J. McNamara, who for the past six years has been curate of St. Catherine's Church here, celebrated his farewell mass on Sunday morning, and the event proved to be very sad, both for the departing priest and the members of the congregation, who have learned to love Father McNamara very dearly, not only for his priestly character, but for his kind, lovable disposition that endeared him to all and made many warm friends during his stay here among the Faithful. Father McNamara was very much affected during the Mass, and it, is, it, it was with much difficulty that he could proceed with the Gospel. When the time came for his farewell remarks to the congregation, the good priest was unable to speak for the time being. So deep was his feelings for the members of St. Catherine's Church. Graniteville will play on the home grounds here on Saturday, May 28th, when they will have for opponents the West Chelmsford Club. A good game is looked for. This, of course, is in reference to a baseball team. The members of the A.R. Schott Hose Company were out for practice duty on Monday evening and flushed out many of the hydrants throughout the village. The local fire company is now getting along finely, and it is the intention of the members to hold a gala day in the village on some Saturday during the summer months. At that time, no doubt, another hose coupling contest will take place to see who will have the honor of holding the silver trophy, which is at present held by the A.R. Schott Hose Company of this village, they having won it in competition last fall. The competition is between the, the three villages, uh, the A.R. Show Company of Graniteville and a company from Westford Center and another third company from Forge Village. Robert J. McCarthy, past chief ranger of Court 170 MCOF, that's the Massachusetts Catholic Order of Foresters, attended the Grand Court Convention as a delegate that was held at Faneuil Hall, Boston during this week. The teachers of the sergeant school here held commemorative exercises of Memorial Day on Friday afternoon. The Ladies' Aid Society of the Methodist Episcopal Church held a baked bean supper in the vestry on last Thursday evening. After the supper, an entertainment was given, which was very entertaining. Henry Smith had general charge of the, of the entertainment, and the ladies had charge of the supper. That's the news in Westford for the week ending May 28th, 1910. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Ryan Cousins of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions and podcasts from the Wardsman at our website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from a century ago. This is Bob Oliphant, and I hope you will join us for next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.